Hey there everybody, this is Piper here and welcome to the second battle from the Cup of Nations 2016 between Sears Tacitus and HOS Luke. So again like the first battle, this is Greece versus Pontus. The way this tournament's um, played, everyone's allocated a faction and you play several league battles and you play knockout rounds and both players have played many battles to get here. And if you watch the first vid if you watch the first battle, you'll notice that Tack brought a very heavy orientated pike army. Something like six armored hoplite gold gold and four hoplite. So Tack's going for something slightly different here. He's actually gone for an army I've never seen before play against Pontus. He's gone for instead of pike, four heavy peltists. They are gold gold. Six Cretan Archers, their gold attack. Four Rodian Sliggers, their gold attack. And he's gone for Greek Cavalry, but he's gone with gold gold. Two Chevrons. He's got a unit of Militia Cavalry, left flank. And another one on the right flank. And these guys are 5 upgrade. Luke has brought... He's changed his army from the last battle. He's actually gone with Pike this time. He had Peltis in the previous battle. He's gone for Pike this time, and they are five upgrade. Five of them, five upgrade. If five of them, four, five upgrade. Rather, five. Four of them have five upgrade, and the fifth one's a general, which is in the center. They are go gold. Six archers go gold. Three chariots, no upgrade. Two chariot archers. The chariot archers are four upgrade, so gold attack, bronze defense, and four pontic, rather uh, three pontic light cavalry. So these guys are actually better than militia cavalry, but they won't do too well against the Greek cavalry in hand to hand combat. So this is quite an interesting battle. In the sense that this is a tournament, and what probably happened was both players try and anticipate what the other will bring. Obviously, Tack has revealed his Pike Army to Luke in the first battle. He's gone for something a bit different, and it'll be interesting to see how he uses the Peltis versus the Pike. So he's going to charge four units of Militia Cavalry, and that might have been a micro mistake by Tack because. Or, I think, what, so look, attack was actually quite smart there. He actually put a unit of Greek cavalry in loose formation, and a unit of Greek cavalry in loose formation. And he's done that there to trick, try and trick Luke into thinking it was two units of militia cavalry. And obviously, a Greek cavalry, a go-go to Chev. Uh, tight or loose, they're going to absolutely rape Pontic Light Cavalry. So that was quite a smart move there by Tacitus. He did get some kills on the Pontic Light. He wasn't actually able to route them, and he suffered a bit of damage himself to the Greek Cavalry. And he's going to try and do the same again if he can get in there. And because Luke took Skirmish Mode off these guys, he didn't put, them, he didn't put it back on, and he's lost a unit of Pontic Light. Attack is doing the same on the right flank. He's trying to get some kills in the archers. Um, the archer war starts between the archers. Attack does have the Rodian slingers on the left flank, and they'll be a bit vulnerable to the the Pontic light cavalry and the chariots now. Attack is going to charge forward his cavalry here, and there's an engagement on the right flank. Obviously, the the Greek cavalry Gogo Tushev will be very powerful versus the Pontic Light Cavalry. And that's good plays are by Tacitus. Uh, he's going to be a little bit vulnerable here. It looks like because the the chariot archers were actually fresh and the side chariots are coming in, they're going to catch the unit of Peltis. But the Peltis do actually get an advantage versus chariots, if I remember correctly. So the chariot's going to charge in here and route a lot of the units of archers. But these chariots are actually running a mock. I think they're actually getting flamed by the Cretans. 
So the idea here is Tack wants to win the, the cab battle and use his superior light cavalry to chase down the enemy archers. But there are a lot of um, enemy pike. The bronze shields are four of them are five upgrades and the generals go gold. So it's quite a lot for Tack to defeat without any pike himself. And he mustn't lose too many archers because he needs the archers to shoot at the, the bronze shields. So Tack doing a great job on the left side. He's actually been able to catch two units of archers. Uh, Luke is keeping a unit of side chariots the back here just to defend these guys. These guys will come back from routing if Luke can defend them. Luke is going to push forward with the pike. He wants to really get these Cretan archers off the field. Uh, something about the, the bronze shields, they don't have the best stats versus missile. So if Tack can save these Cretans and kill Luke's own archers, uh, Tack will have the advantage. Still get two units of heavy peltists. And because these guys are gold gold, the javelin's going to be pretty powerful. He's got the two units of peltists on the other flank as well. And you don't often see peltists being brought by Greece. Obviously, Greece is more known for the pike, but that was a great move there by Tacitus. He's outflanked the uh, bronze shields right there. And because they were outflanked, the pike didn't fight for too long, which meant that he didn't lose too many cavalry. So Luke's keeping his light cavalry, trying to defend his bronze shields, and Tack will be trying to get as many kills as he can. Because he doesn't want these guys to right off the field. I think... So what's happened there is... Tag didn't have the archers in guard mode. Which meant that some, some players put their archers into guard mode. Which means that if they get caught like this... They won't fire at the enemy. They won't engage. They'll still withdraw. Which meant that it was a good push there by Luke. Caught the, the Cretans and put them into combat. And the Cretans are getting very close to the red line. So even if Luke can just route one of the units here off the field, it will be a massive advantage to him. Because he doesn't really have uh, much in the way of cavalry left against tax cavalry. So the heavy peltists have gone in. They're going to try and get some kills on the, the bronze shields. I don't know whether Tack actually meant to do that. I think he would have been better using his Peltis th to throw their javelins first. But he did get some kills on the bronze shields. He's trying to save these units of Cretans. Maybe that was intentional because he knows that if he loses the two Cretans, it's going to be very hard for him to have any chance of winning. Tack has switched to the, the regular archers. So basically Tack's made a, a gamble there. He's going to sacrifice the two units of Cretans, or one unit of Cretans, to kill the five units of Pontic Archers. That was probably the right move to make. Because, obviously, the chariots are coming in here. Yeah, there's all the piker here as well. Luke's really been pressing in this area. And, obviously, the, the right side, Luke also has the unit of Pontic Light here as well. And I'd, I will assume that Luke will probably chase these guys right off the field. So a very close battle. Tack has a lot of cavalry left. Uh, he's still going for the the Pontic archers. They're 10 in strength. There's you know of Pontic like right there. They could be supporting those archers a bit better. And yeah, Luke will make sure these guys right off the field. So there's a lot of pike here for Tacitus to defeat. These guys, they're not full strength. They're about, most of them are over half strength. All of them are over half strength. One is 49, one is 37. That's the general. So the general, so that'll be gold gold. Another one is 14, so 37, 49, 44. So there's a lot of pike left, at least four units of pike right there, one is gold gold. What does Tack have? Tack has the four units of heavy peltists. 
obviously these guys aren't full strength they're very tired and the cavalry the cavalry is go gold and at the start of the battle they were go go to chev attacks done a lot of killing on the enemy archers so i wouldn't be surprised if some of these guys have a third chev one two three four five six there's two chevs still two three two three four five six so it looks like that one's actually three chev that's the general so that's three chev there and one two three four five six so that's still two chev So Luke's probably going to make a box here. Obviously these guys probably have a fair amount of javelins left. Which can still be very uh, damaging to Luke. So we're going to fast forward there. So there's a unit of side chariots at the back. Uh, no Pontic archers are left. Unit of Pontic light cavalry and another one on the right flank as well. So Tag has a lot of light cavalry that's very high quality he's got one that is the general is go gold three chev the rest of them are go gold two chev and a militia cavalry i think they're actually five chev unless they've got experience they're five chev at the start of the battle both armies are resting up i'd say this is about equal to be honest attack has one heavy pelt is 37 22 34 and 30 so to be honest, it's I'd say it's kind of 50-50 right now. Obviously, Light Cavalry does very badly versus any form of Pike. However, when they're gold gold with multiple Chevs, they become far stronger and a lot more useful versus Pike. So I will imagine Tack will be wanting to do some sort of hammer and anvil strategy here. If you're a fan of Alexander the Great, you'll know his strategies with Hammer and Anvil. And Luke is a little bit close to the red line as well. I'd imagine Tack probably told Luke right there just to move back slightly. Although, to be honest, uh, Tack does have the, the cab advantage. But Luke probably is a little bit close to the red line there. So Luke's going to move out a little bit. He's got a unit of... He's got a lone unit of... Or a lone... A lone horseman of Pontic Light Cav. So let's fast forward this. Just see if these guys have any arrow, arch, uh, javelins left. I think these guys are out of javelins. Can't remember if they have the the animation for javelins. They've got their swords out anyway or their, their daggers. Let's play this here. So we're about two-thirds of the way through this battle let's speed this up and Tack is going to separate his cavalry he's got four units of his heavy peltis at the back and he's going to try and get the kills on the enemy cavalry so the reason for this Tack wants to use his javelins on the backs of the pike. He doesn't want to engage in combat. Luke is going to try and defend his cavalry. And he's actually got one of his cavalry units caught right there. But he's been able to salvage that unit. So they're down to six in number. Good play there by Luke. Was able to catch that unit Peltis. Used his lone horseman to basically hold back that unit there. And that was a major play there by Luke. Tack will lose that unit of Heavy Peltis. Are these guys throwing anything? So with that play, the odds have now turned in favour of Hoss Luke. So these guys are, these are uh, 8 in number, so there's a good possibility these guys will come back from routing. They're they're not too tired. They could come back. I'd say it's probably kind of 50-50. And 
and there's a good charge there by Tacitus. Got another three kills on that cav unit, but they haven't routed yet. And it doesn't look like these guys will come back. Looks like they get freaked out. They're going to route. It's probably off the field now. Let's speed this up slightly. Again, Tack is outflanking Pontus. Which is going to cause a little bit of fear amongst the, the Phalanx. And I think the the Peltist have... They have more stamina than the Pike. So the Pike are going to tire a lot more than the Peltist. Plus, I think the Peltists are faster as well. So if Tacitus can keep these guys away from the cavalry, he'll do a lot of damage with the javelins. And he actually put a volley in there to hit the backs of the pike. And I think those guys... So there's those guys there. They're routing straight off the field. And Tack is going to throw the javelins now. So you see here targeting the backs of the pike. That's going to speed this up as well. Again, just using the javelins to throw the spears with the javelins at the backs of the pike. So if these guys throw javelins at the first, if they are kept on fire at will, they'll just throw... The javelins at the first unit of phalanx they see, which wouldn't be too bad. Uh, too bad actually. That would actually be that one there. He would get side on shots, but it's better for him to actually target that unit there, and that will get tackle a lot more kills. And again, this is actually very unusual for a, a Greece versus Pontus matchup, because normally it's Greece that boxes at the end. Greece will try and kill the the enemy infantry, use the cavalry to kill the archers and then box. It's unusual for Pontus to be the one that boxes it at the end. But I guess that happens when you bring four units of Peltus. But again, this, this has been a very interesting battle. You don't often see these sort of... Um, armies brought with Greece and it's due to the fact that a lot of these players have played many games together and they try and gain the advantage by bringing unorthodox armies which does give an advantage if someone's not used to playing against four Peltists with Pontus or a Pontic army or if they don't bring enough chariots to defend the archers for example Tak brought gold gold Greek cavalry to Chev. If Pontus only brought two side chariots, might have a hard job defending the skirmish troops. But anyway, Tak is going to outflank on all sides. He's trying to go for the, the sides of the box. And it looks kind of 50 50. Tak done a lot of damage with the, the javelins. It's just a question of can this box hold out? Don't really see too much else on the battlefield. So I'll keep this on. I know the charge is going to go in any second. Don't want to triple speed it. I want to sort of see the charge from the start. Just see where the general is. That's probably the key unit in this battle. It's the the gold gold pike so I would imagine that would be the the general right there yeah that's the general so that's the charge going in here Tack is putting in his peltis first going to charge in the cavalry as well however it looks like Pontus is going to come out here. 
It's a very tight battle. And the generals just died for Greece. But I think the battle was probably over even if Greece had its general. Because the army was kind of routing before the general actually died. But anyway, that was a great battle there. Very well played to both players. I thought Tact played very well at the start. And he made a lot of really good plays. However, I think the key in this battle was at the end. Basically, Tack had probably the advantage. He had the four units of Heavy Peltis, the Greek cavalry, which is a unorthodox army, but used it very, very well. And then he was able, Luke was able to get that kill on that unit of Heavy Peltis. He charged in his lone unit of Pontic Light Cavalry, the, the one horseman that was left. Caught the unit of uh, Peltis, which basically meant that they were held up for long enough to enable Luke to get the pike in and his re remainder of his cavalry in to get the route. So he managed to get that unit down to eight. They routed off the field, which meant that Tack only had three units infantry. And I think if Tack, if Tack had that other unit of heavy peltis, no doubt, I think Tack probably would have came out on top. But anyway, that was a, a really well played battle by both players. And again, that was a, an amazing ending with Pontus actually being the faction that boxes, not Greece. So that was the second battle in the Cup of Nations 13, 2016 uh, final. Obviously, the score is now 1 1. Tack won the first battle. Luke has won the second battle, which is this, this battle. So that leaves there's one, there's one battle left. And that will be the next battle in the series. So I hope you've enjoyed this battle replay. As always, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. This is Piper signing off.